In this video, we are going to learn about if statements and how useful they are to control the flow of our code, and later we are going to make our weapon revolve around the player to make progress on our game. Currently in our game, if we zoom out in the scene view, you will see that the clouds have moved too far to the right, and they are outside of the view of our main camera, which is viewing only this part of our scene. So the idea would be that we could select all of those clouds, and if we select the move tool in the scene view, and select all of the clouds in the hierarchy, we could just move them back on the left side of the screen, again, outside of the view of the camera. So when I press play again or unpause our game, the clouds will be back moving from the left to right. So the idea would be to wait until they reach the edge or outs be outside of the camera, and then move them back again uh, to the left from the camera. So we need the condition. The condition would be if clouds are too far to the right, move them back to the left from our camera and make them move again to the right and repeat the process so that they are moving continuously on our map while we are playing our game. In C Sharp, we can do this using the selection statement. So if, if else and switch. And if we take a look at the if statement, because this is what interests us, we have this example, display weather report, and we get the temp in Celsius in the double format. So this is another primitive that stores uh, fractions as well. So we are going to check if temperature in Celsius, this data is less than 20, we are going to print this statement. Else, so this is called, else we are going to print this statement. So let's open our Clouds controller script and let's try implementing this if statement. How would we go about it? Well, we know that we are moving our clouds to the right. The right direction is on the x axis. So right and left is x axis because vector 3 takes x, y, and z. Okay, we know that. So we need to have some value that will be limiting it. So here in our for loop, we had this clouds.length. So we need to have another variable in our cloud contro Clouds controller. In the class code block, we are going to add another serialized field, private, float, and we are going to call this underscore x with capital L limit. And I'm going to set it to be 12.5f. This is the value that I have checked. But basically, you would see what works for you by going to the Unity inspector and moving the clouds too far to the left or to the right and check the value. So in Unity, you would select your clouds and try moving, for example, this one here, here, and we can see in the inspector the transform, the position is 12.77. Now, interesting thing is that we have this position in the middle is position zero, and the position to the left will be minus 12.77, which will make it appear to the left from our camera, and we are going to utilize this. I'm going to control Z to undo the movement of my cloud, Okay, so X limit, we could use that to teleport the clouds to the left from our camera. But where, where do we add this if statement? Well, we need to go to our update because this is something that we are going to check after we move our clouds. So each cloud will move to the right. And what do you think? We are going to add it after this for loop or inside this for loop? Well, in the for loop, we are moving all the clouds at once but the if check is for each specific cloud. So what do you think? Where should we put it? Well, I hope you said inside of this for loop because this check needs to be performed per each cloud and we are accessing each separate cloud using this clouds with the index i. So we access each slot of our array. So this is the per perfect place to add this if statement. So let me add some more lines here inside this for loop. I'm going to use tab to add indentation and we can add if and open parenthesis. And we are going to add underscore clouds with index i. So we access the transform of the currently moved cloud. And we are going to add a dot position. This is a vector 3 position. And we are going to access dot x value because that's what we want to check. If this is greater than our underscore x with capital L limit, close parenthesis. And this will be our if statement. So if this is correct, we need to move our cloud position or basically teleport our cloud to the left from the camera. And I have already mentioned that we can just negate the X limit 
because the center of the coordinate system is at the center of our map. So if we move it to the minus X limit, we are going to still be on outside of the camera, but on the left side. So here is just a math behind this. It isn't important for learning C sharp, but basically what we need to do is call underscore clouds with index I, so our cloud dot position. And we are going to subtract from it. So minus equals, which is basically the same as equals the underscore clouds with index I dot position minus. So I'm going to just use minus equals. And now we just give it a value that we want to subtract from this position. And what we want to subtract is a new vector three. So we need to create a new vector three defining how much on X we should move our position. And we are going to open parentheses and we are going to pass the uh, underscore X limit because we already have minus here. But what would we achieve by it? We need to finish it by adding comma y equals zero, comma z equals zero, because we are not going to move our cloud on y or z, we are only going to move it on x. Still, something doesn't seem right. Well, if we subtract this value 12.5, what we would achieve is our cloud would move here, it would have a value of 12.5, for example, and then we would move it back to zero, so it would suddenly appear in the center of our screen. What we need to subtract is twice this value, so we need to end up at the minus 12.5. So in our code, we just need to go to our condition and minus equals new vector three, two multiplied, so asterisk, uh, the underscore X limit, and it should do the trick. And again, the point is this code will only run, or actually this code will only run if this condition is met. Otherwise, it will check the condition, it is false, it will skip this line of code and it will never invoke it, never teleporting our clouds back on the left side of the camera. Okay, save the script, let's go back to Unity. Let's press play here. And now our clouds should be moving and I can see in the scene view that the cloud was teleported to the left. We can even select in the hierarchy clouds, give it a speed of five. And you should see that the clouds are constantly moving on our map. So our condition seems to work fine. Now, if we stop our game, the speed that you set through the inspector will not be uh, kept. So the speed will return to the value of one. And only if you change the speed right now and press play, the new value will stick. So just uh, stop the game and we can go to the second part of this video, which is making our weapon revolve around our player. Now in our game, our weapon needs to hit the enemies so that it, we can kill them and kind of survive as long as we can. Usually this means that our objects need to collide and we need to know about collisions in Unity. And the most important part is that we need to move our objects using rigid body movement, not the transform. Now in our Unity, in the hierarchy, if we select our player and the weapon parent, we are going to see that it already has the rigid body. If we expand it to see the weapon, it already has something called Circle Collider 2D. Now again, this is about learning C sharp for Unity. So I'm not going to explain everything that we have here. Just know that we need to have a collider object and a rigid body, and we need to move the collider using a rigid body to get the collisions in Unity to work. So what we need to have is a separate script to control our weapons rotation and actually our weapon parent. Now we already have weapon script, which we have used in our first project where we had our square and our circle. So we are going to right click here, create and C sharp script. Let's create weapon rotation and let's open this script right. up. I have my weapon rotation script open and we need to move our weapon using rigid body. So if you recall, we wanted to create a serialized field and we would create private rigid body 2D because we are working in 2D and I like to call mine underscore RB 2D and semicolon at the end. We also need to have a serialized field and we are going to define speed. So private float underscore speed. Let's set it equal to 200. Now to rotate our rigid body to D, we are going to use something called move rotation. This is a method that takes float angle, new rotation angle for the rigid body object, and it is given in degrees. Now we can take a look at the example. And you can see that we are using fixed update and called RB2D move rotation 
and we use RB to the current rotation, so dot rotation, plus the speed times fixed delta time. So let's do the same for our weapon rotation. We're going to go to update, let's type fixed, update to modify it, and we are going to type RB 2D with the underscore dot move rotation, open parenthesis, and as you recall, we had to call underscore RB 2D dot rotation, which is the current rotation, and we are going to use plus underscore rota speed, I think we had, speed times time dot fixed delta time. And this is how our weapon will be rotated or how it will revolve around our player. Let's save the script, let's go back to Unity. Now I think we have mentioned this previously, but fixed delta time is the interval in seconds of in-game time at which physics and other fixed frame rate updates like mono behavior are performed. Now fixed delta time is specific for physics engine, so that's why we use it instead of the time delta time. Okay, let's save our script, let's go back to Unity. Now. What we would like to do is give this weapon the script, but if you take a look in the scene view, if we select the rotation tool, it will rotate around its own pivot point. I'm going to undo this. So what we want to do is have a weapon parent placed exactly where our player is, and the weapon would be its child object. So the trick is if we rotate our parent object, the weapon will rotate around the, this uh, pivot point of the parent object. So that's basically what we want to do. We want to select our weapon rotation script and drag it onto the weapon parent object in our hierarchy. We can see that the weapon rotation requires RB2D reference, so rigid body, and the weapon parent already has one, so we can just drag it and assign it here. And let's just press play. And the result should be that the, the weapon is revolving around the player, and when we move our player, the weapon follows us around. Great! In the next video, we are going to add enemy to our game, and we are going to also talk about another important topic of C-Sharp, which are events. See you in the next video.